Hey, it's me, GB, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play Enderal Forgotten Stories. Before we jumped into this one, I just wanted to say that um, I record my videos uh, ahead of time, more so than you think. So, sometimes I get accused of ignoring comments and constructive criticism. This is absolutely not the case. It's just that the episodes have already been recorded. I've got a rigorous uh, recording schedule that I stick to most of the time. And, and you know, I, I always read the comments. What I do is literally every day, I read two full pages of YouTube comments and get back to pretty much everyone that I can. I'm not ignoring anybody, I promise you. If, you, if it seems like I'm not taking into consideration some constructive criticism, it's because I haven't recorded in a new recording session yet um, after reading said comments that being said uh, there were a lot of uh, constructive feedback feedback based on that one episode where you know it, I, I think literally last Monday's episode where it was really tough and I was having a tough time um, one thing that I really want to focus on in my YouTube videos is basically just not getting frustrated as easily during games uh, it's been a thing that's been creeping up over the years I've noticed it trust me I've noticed it like my frustration for not doing well in video games uh, it's been building up and I'm trying to cut back on on that now that I have a sort of new mentality I'm trying to focus on uh, you know improving in a lot of ways uh, so just know I'm trying to fo I'm, I'm, I, I know that uh, that was kind of a lapse last Monday because I was just getting way too frustrated uh, during that segment I was just trying to get through that one main quest because I knew if we could get back it probably uh, you know we could do some side stuff and level up so just know that just know I am trying to work on the frustration I know that it ramps up quite quickly um, and yeah, trying to make the best series I can. So, thanks so much for watching thus far. Um, and let's just get right back into it. Let's take a look at what we were doing. Uh, we're doing part of something momentous part four. We'll probably get this started, but we will not continue it. Because as you saw, yeah, it's... Uh, Oh boy, it's, 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 yeah, things are a little too hard. We're going to need to get some learning books. By the way, that was the other thing. A lot of people have been saying that, GV, you know that you need to get learning books to, in order to increase your skills. Yes, I know. I know that. No, I know how it works. A lot of people seem to think I, I don't know how that works. I understand that. Um, I just didn't have a lot of learning books in my inventory for what we needed. So we're going to have to go buy a whole bunch, especially for archery, uh, which I was trying to just get back to arc, you know. In order to do but anyways let's take a look at this main quest here uh it's part of something momentous part four lashari pegas claims that she has found a clue to the person behind the mercenary attack an old russian grot she wants me to meet her in dancing in the dancing nomad after arenthial briefed me about our further actions so I think we will get briefed um, in order to see what our options are with these other quests. Uh, but then we will definitely be taking a break. Don't worry. I'm not going to be continuing on with these really difficult quests. So uh, what else do we have? Um, okay, so this is the one with the, yeah, the 10 sheaves of vine, Vinroot. This is the bounty missions. This is the uh, Forgotten Stories. I think someone in the comments did confirm that this was Forgotten Stories. This is... I'm not sure. This is... I'm not sure. This is the book one, and this is the knowledge one. Okay, so it looks like we do have to go talk to Tielor. Now, it says, by the way, optional. Confront Tielor Arenthial with his dispute with Truchessa. So I guess what that means is we can just ask him uh, at this point, which we will do. We're trying to do all the optional yes. stuff. Because it seems like we do get little bits of bonus experience, of course. So let's try to ask him about that if we possibly can. Yeah, there's both of our... What the hell is this thing? It's emanating a strange noise. I do really feel like this is bad. I don't think that this might be as good as we think that it is. But who actually knows, I suppose. Uh, search scroll stack. Okay. Empty parchment scroll of mage light cheat. No, I don't care. The Hello there. Apparently we... Okay, it looks like this is confronting him. What was that about? Your argument with Natara and the Emporium? Irrelevant. This madman, Koarek. He has completely reshuffled the cards. Now we not only have to deal with the High Ones, but also with him and his fanatics. <sighs> However, there's also good news. You have probably seen it already. Uh, the giant machine back there? Yeah, I've seen it. You managed to reconstruct the beacon. Physically, yes. And we also know how it works now. And how it can put an end to the cycle. How? It is easier than we thought. 
The beacon was constructed for one thing, to destroy the High Ones. Once reconstructed, infused with energy and activated, lit, as the Pyrenees called it, it can banish the High Ones from this plane of existence. Uh, how do you know that? <laughs> what? Destroy them. How is it supposed to work? The High Ones are... Immaterial, indeed. Essentially, they can be compared to the cold or to shadows. Omnipresent elements, yet we cannot touch them. Energy, if you will. However, there is a counterpart to each energy. Cold and fire, shadow and light. The High Ones and the Beacon. Okay, the dialogue's been pretty great so far, so I really hope they explain why and don't just, like, kind of hope that we don't look into that. So you mean that the beacon is some kind of counterpart to what the High Ones are? Yeah, that's literally what he just said, Alok. Yes. Imagine a torch driving away the darkness in the moment it is ignited. This is what the beacon can do, except that the banishing will be permanent. That sounds good. So what's keeping us from lighting it? Sharim mentions sources. Yes, as I said, it needs to be infused with energy before it can be lit. I take it you have noticed the three sockets on its base. They are what it draws its power from. Once they are filled, the beacon can be ignited and the High Ones will be undone once and for all. At least, if the old writings are true. The only thing left for us to find out is what these energy sources are. But we are close. Give the Arcanists some more time and I will let you know if there's any news. In the meantime, get equipped accordingly. Some of the Neremis have landed already, and outbreaks of the Red Madness become more and more frequent as we speak. Okay, so now we can meet Lashari. I'm not sure if that's a main quest, but again, we're going to be trying to go for the one to two star quest. We are not <laughs> going to get caught up in these three star quests. Let's see here. The Trichesha Messen... The Trichesha Mess... Jesus, that's a hard couple of words to say. The Truchessa mentioned something about what happened in Kyra. Kira. What did she mean by that? Well, it's only fair to tell you. You've always been honest to me, so I will do the same. Have you ever heard of the Night of the Thousand Fires? Oh, of course. Vaguely. Between 8,192 and 8,202, there was an underground movement in Kira called the Red Half Moon. They were brought into being by a group of intellectuals and philosophers who, under all the freedom of thought Saldrin granted them, started questioning the reign of the Golden Queen, and thus the Lightborn themselves. Freedom of thought that Saldrin granted them? What do you mean by that? Saldrin saw himself as the god of knowledge, and accordingly he reigned his country. In Kira, no opinion is forbidden which is why it is home to countless magic schools and universities, where people do nothing but discuss the reason for being all day long. An appealing thought if you hear it for the first time, but a cunning people isn't easy to reign. There have been more revolts and riots in Kira than bones in a graveyard, and the Red Half Moon was the worst of them. Sounds like maybe they need democracy then, <laughs> which is the next logical step. So this Red Half Moon tried to end the reign of the gods, just like your son did, correct? Correct. Just as my son did. But other than him, they fought like cowards. Terror, dust crystals planted in the marketplaces, and assassinations, you name it. If they killed innocents, they blamed the Golden Queen. And if they killed her soldiers, they celebrated themselves as liberators. However, they never succeeded in putting her down. And neither did she in destroying them, which is why the court turned to the Lightborn for help. A division of the Holy Order led by me, a young keeper of barely thirty winters. Why did you have to come all the way from Enderal? Didn't the Order have a bastion on Kira? None to be taken seriously. You know, not everywhere is the Order as present as here on Enderal, or as it once was on Narim. In Kira, we were ridiculed. I saw the Kiranian keepers who served the Golden Queen. 
A bunch of decadent gluttons who had dedicated themselves to the court's banquets rather than to the will of the gods. They were pathetic. Sycophants! That's one of my favorite words. That's what that would be. I see. So what happened? A moon after our arrival, we received an anonymous tip on where one of the half-moon spaces was supposed to be located, in a small coastal village. As we entered it, we were greeted by the township's elders, and the villagers themselves had gathered behind them. You should have seen how they stared at us, as if we were plunderers. I should have seen by then that something was wrong. Let me guess, the entire thing was a trap. That's what they wanted us to think, and they did a good job at that. A veiled person here, an archer on the rooftops there. I got nervous, because villagers are not, they bested us in numbers, and they had cattled us. Then a man seemed to charge at us, and I gave the order to draw weapons. It was just the spark they needed. It came to a fight. <laughs> no, not a fight. A massacre. The villagers had pitchforks and shepherd staffs, and we had shadow steel swords, let alone the fact that we were trained warriors. I realized that I had made a mistake a split second after it started, but it was too late by then. My men, they slaughtered them all, like pigs. At the end of the day, 300 people were dead, and only 10 of them were keepers. Nice, man. That's a new high score. I mean, honestly, if somebody charged you, what are you going to do? Just take it? Like, what was the other option here? You can do anything at all to stop... Yeah, try stopping a 300-person battle, 600-person battle, whatever it was. So the Red Half Moon set all this up. I get it. But why? Why would they want an entire village slayed? Well, what better proof of the Lightborn's cruelty is there than a division of keepers who, out of pure wickedness, slaughtered an entire village, women, children included? If the people had already distrusted us before that, that distrust had turned into hatred, and nothing could have changed that, not even the Golden Queen's heralds. We set sail back to Enderal a week later. Two years after that, the Red Half Moon destroyed itself due to infighting. Ironic, isn't it? A bit. You panicked and things got out of control. There's no shame in that. Maybe. The Lightborn and the Grandmaster back at that time showed the compassion I wouldn't grant myself. But I learned one thing, and that is that I will never again let fears about my own life influence my decisions. What happened in Kira was the consequence of my own cowardice, and my unwillingness to give my life for a just cause. That will never happen again. Okay, 100 experience points, there we go, we got the optional objective. Uh, we can get some backstory on him. Back on the Half Moon Island, the High Ones told me something there? Well, this sounds... Relevant. We're, we're obviously, we're going to wait on the uh, backstory stuff, but this one sounds relevant. Uh, and I don't agree with all of that. I mean, if, if villagers are charging you, you should probably defend yourself. And I, if it if they all start fighting you, I mean, <laughs> what are you going to do? Just stay, eh, I, I, I respectfully decline to fight. I, I don't know. There's something I need to tell you. Back on Half Moon Island, the High Ones told me something there. What? Terranor Korik sees himself as one of the emissaries too. The... Messias. Really? That's interesting. Provided this is true, that means that the emissaries aren't just people who fight the cleansing. They are people who fight for it, too. And that also means that whoever granted us our powers and our purpose isn't an enemy of the High Ones, but a neutral party. Aged man, perhaps? Oh, or the Veiled Women, that's true too. Not necessarily. The High Ones also said that Korok is wrong and that he isn't really an emissary. And neither are you. I beg your pardon. Well, according to the High Ones, Korok only thinks himself an emissary because he wants to feel important. What? And the same goes for me? That's ridiculous. They wanted to deceive you. 
to sow discord. I saw the threat the cleansing posed before anyone else did. And without me, we would have never come that far. Something changed inside me since I fled from my prison, I feel it. And it is the same thing that made you a part of all this. Now, enough of this. Okay, he did not like that, but I'm not sure what to think. Prophet? I really don't know, and that's honestly one of the most interesting things about this playthrough thus far is, is Tielo or Renthiel actually an emissary, or is he not? The High Ones could definitely be trying to sow Discord. Definitely seems like they're modus operandi. I don't know, though. I just do not know. Let's take a look at our quest, shall we? So, we've still got the main quest here. Meet Lashari and the Dancing Nomad. I'm wondering if we should literally just pause here. I think we should, actually. Uh, because if we get this one started, we might put something in motion that we don't want to be in motion. So, what I'm going to do now is try to do this one. Because as, pe as people have pointed out, I should have enough money to buy the Reeves or whatever it's called. Where is our money? Uh, we have exactly 500, yes. Okay, now, one question I have for people in the comments um, is, I don't need, is that Kal uh, Kalia? Oh, hey, what's up? Uh, one question I have is, I don't need to withdraw the money from the bank, correct? Also, where, uh, okay, hold on, let's go back. Uh, I don't need to, like, actively go there. It should just be accruing by itself, yeah? Hopefully. Okay, let's go to the Undercity and buy those Reeves. Um, which was where? The Undercity main cavern, maybe? Um, we'll finish off this side quest and we'll just do some side... Ooh, that looks so pretty every single time. I haven't nabbed a, um, screenshot of this locale, have I yet? I've, I've nabbed that really beautiful room with the water wheel, but not this overall Undercity. Gosh dang, man. Gosh dang. Yeah, as much frustrations as I've, as I've exhibited with the combat and with the difficulty of this game, um... I, there's so many things that I, I just hope people realize it doesn't mean that I don't like the game. Um, it just means that, yeah, we have to kind of get back on track with difficulty, but, oh man, the, the locales in this game, they put so much work into them. I, yeah, I keep comparing it to Skyrim, but we have to remember, you know, Skyrim was a game released in 2011. This game was released in whatever year it was released in, especially this version, the, uh, the Forgotten Stories version. So they've had a lot of time to add on to it, I suppose, but... Jeez, man, this game is just astoundingly beautiful in places. Anyways, uh, we'll catch up on this quest once once we get over to the location. And we're also going to need to start uh, putting points into our stamina for sure. Now that we have a decent chunk of health. Still don't think it's enough. We'll see, though, with one and two star quests. We'll see if we can actually get something working here now. Okay, so... I found an anonymous letter in Kabara's in Kabar's bedroom, which summons him to a meeting in the corpse pit. I should take a look at that meeting. So you remember we did this one way back when um, we never finished it because we watched him in the corpse pit, but it seemed like we had to like kill him, I guess, for the for the red root, whatever it's called. Um, and I didn't want to do it that way. I didn't want to do the evil way, but it seemed to kind of force our hands. So bring Nathalia ten sheaves of ven a uh, red vin root. So it seems like we can just buy it from him. Um, yeah, let's go see, where is this leading? I feel like this is leading directly to the woman that gave us that quest. Okay, she is not, yeah, alright, well, so, we, it looks like we have to go see this guy, Kabar. Um, I, God, I hope our hands are not tied once again, and it literally just says, hey, guess what? You have to kill me now. I, why would it be that? Why would it do that? A lot of people have been leaving comments that we can go ahead and buy the uh, the root now, but if they don't even give me the option of buying it, what am I gonna do? You know? Move along. We'll try though. Here's the corpse pit. I don't remember it giving me an option to buy the stuff. I'm hoping that it did though. Okay, no, no, no. Um, let's use Bone Ripper. Not gonna say anything about that beautiful damage there. Nothing whatsoever. Okay, let's quick save here. Hello. Oh, he's walking back now. Maybe if we let him get all the way back, he'll start selling it to us again. What the? You? Okay, we've, we've already ran through all of this. I'm not I... gonna listen to this again. No. About two years ago. Yes. I suppose you can figure out the rest. Yes. What other choice do I have? 
As pathetic as it sounds, right now the apothecary and their- I hope you're not being serious. As if those redcoats would risk getting their shiny armor- <sighs> Good question. What now? Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go, yeah, alright, so we did have some other options, so, uh, basically, in a nutshell, if you don't remember what was going on with this quest, they need some, uh, medicine, and he can't sell it to them for a low price, because he's being blackmailed by the Rolada, if I remember right, so we've got some options now here, um, you brought, this was the one before that I did not want to pick, you brought this on yourself, tell me where you store the root, or I'll kill you, nobody's gonna find you down here, really messed up, <laughs> Oh, uh, what else do we have? Go to the Sun Temple. The apothecary there will buy the roots from you at full rate. Give 100 pennies here. That way you can at least sell the roots for a little less. Give 300 pennies here. This should at least cover the next rate. Give the apothecary the sheaves they need. This one sounds like the best to me. So give 300 pennies. Here. That should at least cover the next rate. Give the apothecary the sheaves they need. You're giving me the money? Just like that? Why? Don't ask. Just take it. And sell Natalia the roots, the roots that she needs. I, by the righteous path, I will not forget this. Thank you, really. Okay, sweet. All right, that worked out much better than I thought. I was really thinking we we're gonna come up to a dead end here. Let's grab that health potion. Thank you very much. Um, also, somebody mentioned that we did have the ability to create ambrosia because we found an ambrosia recipe. Now I kind of rid it off in my head because it was alchemy, and I was just like, eh. I don't really want to bother with it, but obviously that's going to be extremely important. So the next time we find an alchemy table, we're going to have to see what we need to do to create some um, ambrosia, since we're in dire need of it. Huh? I talked to Kabar into lowering the prices for you. You should talk to him again. You did? This is good. This is really good. Now let us hope he doesn't lower it to 99 pennies per sheaf. Thank you, Sunchild. You saved a lot of lives today. Okay, 1,300 experience points. Excellent. Um, also, we're going to need to spend a lot of money on learning books, as I've said previously. Uh, but the problem is, how do we get that money? I'm not sure. We have some decent amount of money stored in the bank, but I kind of want to keep it there in order to, you know, um, accrue some interest. So we might just do whatever quests we can get our hands on that are very cheap to level up and get some skill points. You know what I mean? So, uh, can't do that one, can't do that one. Uh, this one, again, I don't have any... If somebody wants to leave me a hint for this one, because I'm just at a complete loss. I have no idea where to go for this one. Uh, if we activate it, there's no uh, quest marker, as far as I can tell. So, if anybody wants to give me some sort of hint, I don't want to just know, but if anybody wants to leave a hint for this one, feel free. Um, and now, this one, I feel like might be good. Blood and Dust. The dust pit in the Undercity offers the opportunity for illegal fights. Perhaps I should go and take a look. Watch the pit fights in the dust pit. Uh, like I said, I think somebody confirmed this was indeed Forgotten Story. So this might be the first sort of DLC quest that we do. And we'll just give it a shot. I don't know what to expect and I'm hoping that it's doable. You saw how difficult that one rat was still in like a beginning area. So I'm not sure, but we shall see. Hello, everybody. Hello. So we're looking for an alchemy table, and we're looking for wherever this quest is leading us. Also, was that a bed that I just saw? Oh, it's being... Okay, that's fine. Um, alright. I don't know where to go. I don't even know if I've been to this location yet, so we'll just follow this quest marker. That looks good. This looks good. Okay, let's keep making quick saves. Undercity Arena. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the arena! Oh, now that... God, look at these environments, man. Seriously. Jesus. They did... They, I mean, they got every ounce. Every ounce of what they needed out of Skyrim. Like, I, I again, I just don't know why they didn't just make their own game at this point. Okay, so here's the arena. What? Find a way to join the fights. So there down there, we have an illegal fight. Okay, excuse me, lady. No, no, thank you. you don't Sorry. Look like you belong here. From the upper city, huh? Yes. You got guts walking around with all What is this place? Ranma Rasha's home for lost kittens. Honestly, if you need to ask, then you sure as fuck don't belong here. Go back to your bathing houses and galleries, sunshine. I I've seen Fight Club multiple times, miss. 
Is there a way to participate in these fights? Ooh, how eloquent. You're from the surface, aren't you? No, don't say anything, I can tell. No cave dweller gets that much sun on his pretty face. So, you want to fight, huh? Oh, you're the sneaky type, aren't you? That look in your eyes. The constant twitching in your fingers. I can tell. Fine. Why not? I don't care about style. As long as you can fight. You do know that we're not doing tumbles down here, right? If you fight well, you can make a lot of money fighting here. But if you don't, well, you can imagine. I die? In other words, you fight to the death. Usually, yeah. Sometimes the loser pleads for mercy, but the crowd doesn't like it. Does the order know about... Come on, man. Yeah, I'm not picking some of the responses that just obviously she's gonna be like, Does the order know... What? Of course not. Either way, I want to fight. Huh. All right. First of all, you'll need to sign this, though. If you can read and write, sign with your name. If not, with a cross. Declaration of consent for the pit fighters added to the inventory. Sign and return the papers. Thank you. Then we can start right away. And, ah, one more thing. I always found this a bit silly. But the crowd always wants a name they can shout to the ring when you're bashing someone's head in. You know, the fighter, the butcher, stuff like that. So, what do you want? I I'm astounded at how, like, seamless this is compared to the other arenas and other Elder Scrolls. Sorry, I, I again, I know people probably hate that I compare this to Skyrim so much, but... Okay, so we got the Destroyer, the Wanderer, the Prophet. Um, hmm. I don't like the Prophet. That sounds like we're a mage. Let's go. How about the Wanderer? Yeah, that might work. I like it. Fair enough. If you want, you can dive right into the ring. There'll be a pack fight in a couple of hours. Oh boy, okay. Pack fight, how much money do I get if I... Yeah, how much money do I get if I win? Well, that depends on the bets. So I can't tell you yet. But if you win, oh, it'll be well worth it. And what's a pack fight? Yeah, also called Last Man Standing Wins. Three to six fighters in the ring. Dog eat dog. I didn't sign up for any dog eating. <laughs> um, I'm not ready yet. Tell me when you're ready to fight. Okay, we should probably quick save before that happens, huh? There we are. All right, let's get started. Eager, aren't you? Good. Just go down to the training dummies. I'll call you when we begin. Fade out, I'm assuming. Survive the mob fight. One star. Ooh. Madam and may sir. Welcome to the Dust Pit! You know who I am, I know who you are, and above all, I know why you are here today. Because you want to see a fight! Today, there are four rookies in the ring, and they all share the same dream. To become the champion of the arena. Oh, can you see them shiver? The sweat glistening on their foreheads? They are afraid. And rightfully so, because they know only one of them will leave the pit on both legs. Madame and may sirs, I proudly present Kata Tanner's daughter, called the Storm. Simael Roth, called the Vagabond. And Thomas Shagar, also known as the Derwish. And last but not least, the unknown warrior who is only known by his moniker, the Wanderer. Now, enough of the words. Fight! Okay, so I'm wondering if they're all gonna gang... Are they seriously all gonna gang up on me? You called this... A oh, oh, this guy... Oh, okay. All right. So, we've got a dude firing arrows. I think I can take him on. So I'm gonna go for the melee people. We got Thomas Shagir here. Okay, as somebody said, we can not only activate one talent, but we can do two talents at one. Where is my... Uh, where is my other talent? Uh, the slow time one. Okay, then. Okay, I have no vibration on my controller, by the way, so this is very weird. All right, that's two down. This guy... Oh, no. Oh, boy. Um, wow. All right, let's go ahead and pop a potion. I'm assuming that's legal. Pop two of those. Wow! Excellent. Excellent. 
<laughs> Not even a one star quest. Oh, leads me right back in. Okay, this time we're gonna go for this guy and we'll let the other two fight it out. Oh my god, this feels so awkward because of the no vibration. Yeah, I'm gonna replace my batteries after this episode is done recording. Okay, let's get a little bit away. Uh, pop assassination. We need to go for Kana here since she has the most health. Okay, this guy's about to die. They're both on their last legs. Now, I'm assuming they're going to let us loot, uh, considering the illegal nature. Who is this? Wait, why are there four bodies here? Oak bow of fire wraths. Sharp steel. Whoa, that was 50 arrows there. There's four bodies. Oh, highwayman. Ooh, glad I got that at the last second. Hopefully, you can pick up the rewards of your pit fights in the reward chest next to Rasha after each fight. Okay, receive the rewards from Rasha. Yeah, that was an easy fight. I kind of got screwed over on the first one there because the arrow guy was able to get me at the last second. But, um, yeah, that was, that was, they were definitely not dealing as much damage as, uh, as, as recent enemies. If we don't get the money until tomorrow, there will be consequences. I'm guessing for so once those it. surface snobs are wishing but for the state of these games. Fine. I'll see what I can do. Good girl. A lot to share. Well fought. This is the guy from the trailer. I know who you are, mister. This person is busy. Okay. Uh, sir, can you move, please? Can I ram into you? All right. Hello? Okay, well, I don't know what's going on with that. We'll try to wait a little bit of time or something. We're going to end this one here, ladies and gents. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, yeah, I, I'm always down for an arena. Uh, no arena in Skyrim at all, right? That was something I really, really did miss, although I guess it makes sense. Yeah, um, we're going to end this one here, and we'll see, I guess, how far we can go. That was a one star, so we can keep this moving. Thanks so much for watching, and thanks so much for supporting me and the things that I do, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.